Well, thank you for joining us. Um, I have referred to this as the oasis in the middle of the week. So it's an opportunity for me just to get to talk with our Grace Bible Church family. I trust that you're having a good week in these difficult days. We need to keep praying for one another and for our country and for decisions that are being made as to what is best for all of us. But anyway, we thank the Lord for you. And I'm going to take these next uh, moments just to share. Maybe it's a devotional uh, or so. But um, I have a little story I'd like to tell you um, to lead into this particular devotional. Years ago, I read an article which was entitled, A Turtle on a Fence Post. The author told about the day that he was, had the opportunity to get together with a preacher that he had respected from a distance who had a great church. And this author says that when he got together with this particular minister, he was talking to him about how successful he was at his church. And, and you know, I know you, God's given you great gifts to be able to lead and, and to build that ministry. And this author said, the pastor replied this way to me. I'm quoting. This pastor said, you know, when I was a schoolboy in a rural area where I lived, I would go out for walks with my dad, sometimes through the woods or whatever, and occasionally, we would come across a fence post, and he said, I remember the first time it happened, there was a turtle on top of this fence post. And he said, I was so excited to see it, and he said, my dad said to me, son, I want, I want to tell you something. If you ever see a turtle on a fence post, you can be sure that someone put it there. It didn't get there on its own. And that pastor said to this author, <clears throat> I want you to know that when it comes to my ministry that you've just complimented me for, I want you to know that I'm nothing but a turtle on a fence post. There have been a whole lot of people over the years who have helped me, prayed for me, encouraged me, strengthened me when I was weak, helped me through the difficult valleys, given me the strength to keep going on, and God working through me and providing for me people at strategic times to make the difference in my life. So this pastor said, as far as I'm concerned, you need to know I'm nothing but a turtle on a fence post. I didn't get there by myself. There are many, many people that I owe a thanks to for helping me with my ministry. By the way, I myself never forgot that illustration. And over the years, I have, to a greater or lesser extent, at least I've tried to view my ministry as I'm nothing but a turtle on a fence post. I didn't get there by myself. Someone else put me there, helped me get there, prayed for me, strengthened me, guided me, counseled me, taught me. And so I really am just a turtle on a fence post. I was at a Bible conference one day and a respected evangelist was given an honor. And as he received <clears throat> this honor in front of the audience, he replied, and I wrote it down, there are many here who deserve this honor more than I do. I accept this award as I do every honor, temporarily, as one day I shall lay it at the feet of Jesus Christ, unquote. What that man was saying, 
He said, I'm really just a turtle on a fence post. Thanks for the award, but so many have helped me to get where I am. After I, some time ago, preached this, one of the leaders of my church, in fact, he was the chairman of the deacons, I knew that he whittled at home and built all kinds of different things. That was his hobby. And some weeks later, he made an appointment, came into my office, and he said, Pastor, I have something I want to give you. He said, I will never forget that sermon about the turtle on a fence post. I said, well, thank you. And he reached into a, a bag and he pulled this out. And he had whittled for me. Here's a fence post. And he had car carved this little turtle. He said, Pastor, I want to give this to you. This turtle on a fence post. And ever since he gave this to me, I have either had it on the, my desk in my office or at my office at home. So when I look around my office, I'll see this turtle on a fence po post to remind me it's not me. It's all the people who poured into me and helped me through the years. What about you? You know, you may be thinking, the truth of the matter is, there was a grandma who prayed for you and met your need when you were struggling or maybe when you were get going astray, and she's the one who gave you counsel or helped you. There may be a deacon or a leader who reached out to you. There may be some other lady in the church who ministered to you when you were going through difficult times, maybe in your marriage. And the truth of the matter is, when we think about it, that's what the body of Christ is all about. Reaching each other, helping each other, strengthening each other, and all of us, in a sense, one way or another, are nothing but a turtle on a fence post. If you have your Bibles, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2. I want you to notice in this passage, in the second verse, there are four generations that are mentioned. 2 Timothy 2, 2. And the things which you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Watch. He says, the things that you've heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men, me, the witnesses, the faithful men who will be able to teach others also. One person helping another person, helping another person who helped another person. David Jeremiah, the Bible teacher, said, disciples are made when new believers are taught the word, led by example, and then trained to transfer the faith to others. We probably all have used the terminology, well, Paul and Timothy. I mean, I've said that I don't know how many times. Well, I have a question for you. If you've used the phrase Paul and Timothy, did you ever ask yourself, who is my Paul? You know, Timothy would, would refer to Paul, who discipled him and helped him. But here's another question. Yes, I have a lot of Pauls who've helped me, but who is my Timothy? We should not only receive help from others, but we should be turning around discipling and training other people, Timothys. So all of us should say that we have a Paul or Pauls and we have a Timothy or Timothys. So fair question, who's your Paul and who's your Timothy? You know, it might be your grandmother. She might be the one who is your Paul right now because she's right there for you when you need it, when you're struggling. God bless her. This verse has one 
person passing on to the next person who passed on to the next and on to the next. So who are you mentoring? Who are you reaching out to? I would say most of the time, there are three basic steps in helping others to serve the Lord in greater ways. Let me give you these three simple thoughts. First, someone spotted our potential. Whatever, wherever you are in your spiritual life right now, how you're serving in the church here or whatever you're doing for the Lord, somebody spotted your potential. It is likely that at some point they noticed something in you, maybe that you didn't even notice in yourself, a potential. I'll never forget. I had been starting to study my Bible. I was about 18 or 19 years old. And I was just doing a personal Bible study. And I mentioned it to a couple of people, what I was learning. One day I was in the foyer of our home church and the Sunday school superintendent walked up to me and he said, Jerry, can I talk to you just a minute? And he called me aside. And he said, uh, listen, he said, um, I have a class that um, I'd like for you to teach. I will never forget. I said, what? I said, I can't teach. He said, well, didn't you, I, I heard that you've been studying your Bible. I said, I have been. And he said, well, wouldn't you like to share that with others? He said, I got a, I got a class of sophomore students and high school kids, and we need a teacher. Would you go and just share with them? That was the beginning of me for the first time ever serving the Lord. And that guy told me, he said, I just saw the potential in you. Who would have thought? I mean, at that point, I sure didn't think I'd be a pastor someday. So someone spots our potential. And then second, someone invests in us. Time and energy, counsel, encouragement. Someone comes along and builds in to us. And finally, someone trusts us with responsibility. They see our potential. They invest in us, and then they entrust us with responsibility. Yeah, maybe a risk, it seems, but they at least reach out and say, I remember people in those early days who would say, now you can do that, Jerry. And I, I said, well, I've never taught before. To which he said, let me meet with you. I'll give you some ideas as to how, how you teach. He said, we have, we have quarterlies, we called them. We have Sunday school material. And he said, well, let me go over it with you. Let me show you how you can do this and how you can teach the students. He saw the potential. He invested in me. He turned the responsibility over to me. And I've been teaching the Bible ever since then. I remember in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, in Mark, chapter 3, the Bible says that in verse 13, and Jesus went up on the mountain and he called to him those that he wanted and they came and he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. Did you see the three thoughts right there? What Jesus did? He selected men with potential. So verse 13, he chose these men. Then it says, they came to him, he appointed the 12, that they might be with him. That, I want you to circle that in your Bibles if you don't take anything else away from this devotional. They were with him. I have that underlined. They were with him. They listened to him preach. They talked to him. They asked him questions. They spent time with him. They watched him pray. They learned how to pray. They learned how to reach out to people. They saw. Jesus saw the potential in them, and then he took them with him. There's nothing like being with Christ, walking with Christ every day. So he 
selected men with potential, he invested in them, and then he trusted them with responsibility. Notice what it says. He sent them out. He sent them out to preach. I don't think they'd ever preached before because he just called them. And he sent them out to heal people and to even deal with Satan firsthand and cast out demons. He trusted them with responsibility. And I think if we could, we can't, but if we could call each of those disciples in here today, and have a little interview with Peter and James and John and so forth about their time with Jesus being with him and the ministries that God would give them because they would be the ones who would reach people for Christ and the church would be built on the foundation. The Bible says it's built on the foundation. Listen to this. Ephesians says, of the apostles and prophets. The church was first built upon these men. And I think if we talk to them and say, boy, what a wonderful, what a great job you would do. I think each of them would smile and they would say, well, you know, the truth of the matter is, I'm nothing but a turtle on a fence post. Jesus invested in me, others invested in me and helped us to do what we've done for God. I hope this has been an encouragement to you. I hope that you, you know what, this would be a good time for you if you haven't done it recently. Write some of your Paul, Pauls, I'll call them, who mentored you, write them a note this week during this time when we're, you know, having social distancing. Write them a note and say, let me tell you the difference you made in my life 20 years ago. Or write a note to your Timothy and encourage him or her during these days. What a blessing that would be. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the people who've invested in me. Thank you, Lord, who have helped me to try to be a good pastor. I am eternally grateful to you for all of those men and women. And may others reach out in the same way and minister to others, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.